Okay, so this video is going to be about coral bleaching. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, you know, first we need to understand what coral are. Coral are tiny invertebrate animals in the same family as jellyfish and anemones. They have a very soft body, which we simply call a polyp, and, and many times the polyp is hidden inside of the shell that they produce, but there's a soft body called a polyp. If we look at this picture right here, we can see uh, the polyp exposed. And here's about a dozen or so polyps, individual polyps of coral. And if we zoom in a little closer, we see four or five uh, individual polyps here in this picture here. So these are corals, tiny invertebrate animals. So I mentioned a moment ago that coral have a shell to them, a calcium-based exoskeleton, calcium carbonate, and they secrete this protective shell and as a way to better defend themselves against their predators. And as time goes by, reefs, coral reefs, begin to form as polyps grow and die and their shells are left behind, and new polyps grow and die and their shells are left behind, and new polyps grow and die and their shells are left behind. And over time, over time, reefs develop into the coral reefs that we're typically used to seeing, like we see in these pictures right here. Coral reefs play an important role in the ecosystem of oceans. You know, they occupy a very small percentage of the area of the Earth, and yet they are home to about 25% of all ocean life, simply because coral contain photosynthetic elements to them, where they're able to do photosynthesis, which is the basis of ocean food chains. So why are they so colorful? Well, I just mentioned that coral contain a photosynthetic element. Let, let me exp explain what I mean by that. Coral live in a mutualistic relationship with an algae called zooanthellae, zooanthellae algae. If we kind of zoom in to one of the tentacles here of the coral, we see that there are actual living algae that will occupy the tissue of the coral. It's what gives the coral their color. Without the algae, the, the, the coral would be a white or a transparent white colorless uh, organism. And so as I just said, the zooanthellae algae provide the color of the corals, whether it's kind of more yellow or kind of the violet color we see here, or maybe some of the oranges that we see. The, the color of coral comes from the algae that are living in the tissue of the coral. And so, again, a great example of a mutualistic relationship, and if you're familiar with mutualism, it's a symbiotic relationship where both individuals, both organisms, benefit by living off of one another. The coral provides a home for the zooanthellae algae, and the zooanthellae algae, because it's an algae, it's photosynthetic, takes in sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide, and produces glucose. And so the glucose from the zooanthellae algae is the primary source of food for the coral to survive off of. You know, another common example of mutualism is between a bumblebee and a flower. You know, a bumblebee provides a service of pollinating a flower, and the flower provides nectar or food for the bumblebee. They both benefit. You know, a fun example of mutualism right, is an example right here between a bird called the, the Egyptian plover and uh, a crocodile. The bird eats parasites out of the mouth of the crocodile, and the crocodile obtains a cleaning. They both benefit. So what is coral bleaching? That's the topic of this video. Well, when stressed, the zooanthellae algae are actually expelled from the coral. The coral lose their color. Now it's a lot more important, a lot more serious than just the coral lose their pretty color. Color. There's a lot more to it than that. What makes coral bleaching so important is that the corals are more susceptible to disease. You imagine they just lost the zooanthellae algae, which is their primary source of food, and so now of course they're more susceptible to disease. They're less likely to survive 
simply because, number one, they lost one of their main sources of food, the glucose created by the zooanthellae algae. So now they're more susceptible to disease. So what are some of the human causes of coral bleaching? What's causing the stress of the coral where they expel the algae? Well, water pollution is one of the leading causes. In the picture here, we see an example of runoff, where we have a storm drain bringing pollutants into the ocean ecosystem here. In this picture, we see an oil tanker uh, that has released oil and there's an oil spill. Well, so all of this, of course, would add to the pollution levels, which would stress the, stress the coral, causing the release of the zooanthellae algae. But probably one of the more striking causes of coral bleaching is through climate change and global warming, through the use of coal, oil, natural gas. You know, burning these fossil fuels for industry, burning these fossil fuels for automobiles, you know, releases a lot of pollutants into the air. And so when we look at this graph right here, uh, we see the blue line representing the amount of carbon dioxide just going up and up and up and up and up and up. Well, now we also look at the red line. The red line shows the average global temperature going up and up and up and up and up. And so the increased temperature increases the temperature of the ocean water as well. And that's one of the biggest causes of coral bleaching is the warmer ocean temperatures are causing the, uh, the, the corals to release their zooanthellae algae. And so what are some of the impacts of coral bleaching? Well, Ocean ecosystems are, of course, becoming devastated as a result of this. We think of a simple food chain right here. The coral is consumed by the fish. The fish is consumed by the squid. The squid is consumed by the shark. You imagine what impact would we have if the coral were suddenly removed from this ecosystem here. The producer, the bottom of the food chain, the photosynthetic producers, if they were to be removed, well, slowly by surely, as we move up and up and up the food chain, other organisms would start to diminish, if not be wiped out completely. Well, corals absorb carbon dioxide. Keep in mind, they're, they contain photosynthetic algae, and the, when they take in carbon dioxide, they, they use that carbon dioxide to help build their skeletons. And so here we have six carbon dioxide molecules, and one by one, the carbon dioxide is being absorbed because of the algae that do photosynthesis. So we know that the protection of corals is one way to combat and fight climate change, and yet we're kind of doing the opposite, where our actions are leading to their destruction. So it's just a way to, another way to connect corals to climate change. Coral reefs, reefs actually help to protect shorelines from the impact of waves. They kind of act like a natural breakwater to kind of dampen the impact, the repeated impact of waves protecting shorelines and maybe property that could be built along the shoreline. And let's not forget that many people visit reefs and tropical areas, you know, for tourist for tourism, for tourist purposes. And so to slowly see the destruction of coral reefs over time, we'll start to see again less and less tourism. So what are some ways to lessen the effects of coral bleaching? Really, it comes down to reducing our carbon footprint. You know, here's a list of ways that we can do that around the house, such as recycling, such as starting a carpool with friends and family, going for walks when we might be tempted to drive a short distance, you know, drying our clothes on a clothesline, you know, going for bike rides instead of, again, maybe driving a shorter distance. You know, using compact fluorescent light bulbs is a great way to save energy around the house. Having our automobile properly serviced makes it run more fuel efficiently. And for those who maybe can afford uh, to, to explore the option of more fuel efficient, greener automobiles. And finally, to plant some trees. You know, as I wrap up this video here, I want to have you, uh, if you're interested, click this button here for more ways to reduce our carbon footprint. So go ahead and uh, put your comments in the box below, and I hope you found this video to be helpful. Thanks for watching.